Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and I am back today with another video as part of the Not Too Shabby Design Team. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to make what I call an Infinity Shaker card. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For today's card, I'm going to be using some spring not too shabby goodies that might look familiar to you, along with some products from my own stash to create what I'm going to call an infinity shaker card. I have tried one of these a couple years ago. I'm not sure what I called it at that time, but if you think about an infinity pool, you don't see the edge on it. Well, I'm going to make a shaker card that doesn't really require a frame and the shaker goes to the edge of the piece of cardstock. Before I get too far into the video, I do have a couple quick announcements. First of all, Jamie from Not Too Shabby announced her monthly subscription kit over the weekend and gave you a sneak peek at the April kit. I will link that video in the description box below as well as a link to the store to the kit itself. Now you won't be able to use a 10% discount on this item because it is already discounted because you're buying more than one product together so it's discounted already. But if you do go over there I would love for you to use my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me keep getting goodies to share with you here on my channel. Secondly, if you are watching this and you entered my Share the Love giveaway, I did announce the winner on Sunday, so if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to go check it out to see if you won, and if you did, how you're going to claim that prize. Once again, I will have that video in the description box below. I do have most of the products that I'll be using for today's card here in front of me. If I add anything later on, I will let you know in the voiceover, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. From Not Too Shabby, I will be using the Dots for Spring paper pad, and I already went ahead and pre-cut a piece from the orange larger polka dots, and this is four by five and a quarter. For my stamps today, I'm going to be using the Easter Wishes stamp set from the shop. I will be using the bunny here with the three eggs, as well as the Cottontails Easter Farm, most likely. I will be doing a little coloring with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, which means I will be using my VersaFine Onyx Black for stamping, and I got out a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock to stamp onto. If all goes to plan with my Cottontails Easter Farm sentiment, I will be using this wood grain embossing folder from the Paper Studio. The final piece for my card today to make that infinity shaker look is a piece of clear Duralar in 3 mil. This is comparable probably to packaging you would get something in. So if you have transparencies or other clear packing, try that out. I just bought this years ago to try shaker cards like this, so I have a whole stack of it. I got this at Michael's. I probably used a coupon, but I will try to find it and link it in the description box below in case you're interested. Now you might be wondering, could you use the clear card stock that you use for card bases? Since I do suggest the 10 mil when you make your card bases, it might be a little too thick for today's project. But hey, if you have it, give it a try. You'll just want to make sure that you use some extra strong adhesive on it and maybe do a little bit of scoring to help with those folds. I did already go ahead and cut my piece of Duralar. This is five by six and a quarter and each dimension is one inch larger than the pattern paper piece. This will allow me to have a half an inch wrap around on all sides. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm going to be doing the stamping. 
because I might have to stamp some of these images or the sentiment twice, I did go ahead and pull in my Misty. Now on this Strathmore Bristol Smooth, there is a little bit of texture, so I did make sure to ink that up twice and press it really nicely. Now normally I use my sleeve to do my little press so it flows nicely on the top of the Misty, but today I didn't have on long sleeves, so I just brought in a paper towel and used that. For this sentiment, I brought in a scrap of craft colored cardstock, and I am just going to center the sentiment in that piece for now. Later, you'll see I do cut it down. Off screen, I fussy cut my bunny image, and now I'm going to be doing the coloring, which I will be doing with some Zig Clean Color Real brush pens. On the screen now are the different colors that I used. I tried to pick out an orange that would go with the background paper and then some others to color the bunny. I'm going to start out by using the light pink that I chose on my bunny's cheeks and his or her inner ears. Now when I color, I do it just as simply as I can. I kind of put my color where the shading would be and then I blend it out. Over on the right you see I just have a scrap of I think that's just printer paper and when I get some extra or what I think is excess color on my blender I just go over there and wipe it off. I continue this same process with the rest of the colors until my bunny is all complete. Now while I finish coloring this up I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I am having such a great time getting to know more about each of you and getting some recommendations in the process. Over the weekend, I asked for some of your favorite YouTube channels, mostly non-crafty, but I did get a few crafty ones too, and I definitely found some new channels to follow. So thank you so much. Today's question is, have you ever made a shaker card? If so, what do you think about them? Do you like to do them as much as you can? Or were you kind of one and done, kind of over shakers? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your answer so I know you want me to see it. For me, I love a shaker card. Now I used to make them a whole lot more frequently than I do now, but I have so much stuff to put in a shaker card, sequins, beads, glitter, you name it, I probably have it. I do enjoy making them and I hope to start making more of them soon. And here's a look at that finished colored bunny. Once I had my bunny colored, I brought in my photo trimmer so I could start cutting down my craft pieces. At the end of this card, I want these two pieces to kind of look like a rustic old sign in the ground. I started by cutting an even border around the sentiment, and then I got the other piece of craft cardstock, which will be the post, and I cut that to three quarters of an inch wide. Now, because I do want it to look like a wooden sign, I am going to add the texture with that wood grain embossing folder. I brought in my cuddle bug and I placed the pieces so the wood grain would go the same way when it's put together. You might notice that some of my post is sticking out the end, but that's okay because I do not need the whole length of this. Now it's time to put together that infinity shaker. I start by placing my pattern piece face down in the center of the acetate or the Duralar piece. I try to get that centered as best as I can and then I bring in some scotch blue removable tape so I can tack that down temporarily. Then with my hands and with a bone folder, I go in and I fold and crease the outside around that piece of pattern paper. Now, if you were gonna use a lighter weight pattern paper, you might want to back it with some cardstock. Once I had all four of those edges folded back and creased, I brought in my fine tip scissors and I cut the edges off at an angle. This is just so when I go to fold them together later, there's not any extra overlap or bulk there on that finished shaker. Now I'm gonna work on decorating the front of the card. I pulled back in those same two pieces of scotch blue removable tape to hold the pattern paper in place once again. 
Now I want to figure out where on the front of the card I want my bunny and my sign to go. Now this did take me a while, so I sped through this pretty quickly. I kept moving it around and arranging the sign and deciding how I wanted that to be. But eventually I did figure it out and then I added some adhesive to the back of the sign first and then to the bunny. Once again, I pulled off that removable tape and I do just kind of stick these to my crafting desk and I can use them again later. The next thing I did was I brought in all three sizes of my big blue removable foam tape rolls and I tried to cover the best that I could the back of the bunny and the sign. Now the reason I did this is when I make my shaker later, I don't want the shaker bits to kind of hide behind these pieces or get hidden behind there. I want them to shake out in the open area. So if I cover that up as much as possible, they will only have the clear places to shake around. So I placed lots of tape there, pulled that release, and then it was time to start adding my sequins. I did want to make sure before I put the card together any further that I put some sequins in the areas that would be open that when I go to pour the sequins in later from the top, they wouldn't have went all the way to the bottom. Once I had those in place, I brought back in my orange pattern paper and I gently laid that on the back of the foam tape, making sure that when I fold those clear edges over, it's aligned like it was when I folded it. I then pressed that in place well and I went ahead and adhered down each of those edges. Now I use my ATG here and I think it will stick, but you might want to use some red line tape for this. I'm not sure liquid would work. Once I had three edges down, I brought in my little cup of sequins and I poured the rest of that in the top. This way it will be above the bunny and the sign later on in the shaker. To finish this card off, it's time to get my infinity shaker put on the card front. I do add quite a bit of adhesive on the back of this just because it's kind of heavy and I wanna make sure it sticks well to the card base. Once I've done that, this gets centered on the card front. You could always make this piece larger to fill the entire card front, but I do like having that little white border. And you'll see there, it just looks like the shaker is kind of falling off the edges like an infinity pool. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's infinity shaker card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.